Here's a Pesach story for all of you that I think you'll all enjoy. It's called A Seder Without Wine. A Seder Without Wine? How could that be? You might ask. Everyone knows that you have to drink four cups of wine at the Seder, and each one has its own bracha. We remember the four stages of how Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. Oh, a Seder without wine is almost unthinkable. Yet, it happened once upon a time when the whole Jewish community had to make a Seder without wine. This is what the story is about. Many years ago, in a land ruled by a king who was friendly to the Jews, indeed, one of his best friends was the rabbi of the community, whom the rabbi admired for his wisdom and learning, kindness and humility. The king loved to spend time with the rabbi discussing matters of importance. And when the king had any problem, kings sometimes have problems also, he asked for the rabbi's advice. He never had any cause to regret. Everything had, would have been well, except that the king had a prime minister who was no friend of the Jews and who was especially jealous that the king was such good friends with the rabbi. One day, the prime minister asked the king, why are you so friendly to the rabbi? Why not, said the king. I admire his wisdom and learning. There is nothing but kindness and fear of God in his heart, and he is the most loyal and wishes me well. He certainly deserves my friendship, what if I prove to your majesty that the rabbi is all, not all that he pretends to be and behind your majesty's back, he will not hesitate to break your laws and speak unkindly about you. I doubt that very much if you can prove any such thing, replied the king. But if you do, I will know how to deal with him. On the other hand, if you fail to prove your reckless accusation, that will be your head. The day after tomorrow, the Jews will begin celebrating their holiday of Pesach. On the first two nights, they have a special feast called the Seder, and they drink four cups of wine. So important is the wine for their Seder that the Jews will gladly sell their shirt to be able to have wine for the Seder. Now I suggest, Your Majesty, that you command the rabbi to tell the Jews that no one, not even the rabbi himself, can drink any wine at his Seder. Then you will see if the rabbi and the Jews carry out your order and what they say about Your Majesty. And how are we going to find this out? asked the king. I know that before the rabbi sits down to run his own seder at home, he visits the guest house where there is a public seder arranged for all the poor and homeless and wandering Jews. If we disguise ourselves, it will be easy for us to join the crowd and see what's going on. So be it, agreed the king. But I warn you, you are playing with your head. It's my head against the rabbis, said the prime minister. The following day, the king sent for the rabbi, and when he appeared, the king said to him, I command you that you tell the Jews, not even you, my friend, may drink any wine at the Seder on penalty of death. The rabbi was surprised and saddened, but he answered dutifully, your majesty's command shall be obeyed. True to his word, the rabbi sent out word to all the Jews in the city. By order of the king, Jews are forbidden to drink any wine at the Seder. But except for that, the Seder should be celebrated in the usual way. With the usual joy and inspiration, and each time when the Haggadah calls for drinking a cup of wine, an empty cup should be lifted. Just like this. And this prayer should be said.
Master of the world, it is revealed and known to you that we sincerely desire to do your will. But the majesty the king forbade us to drink wine tonight on penalty of death. Since according to your holy Torah, saving the life puts aside any mitzvah, even the four cups, we pray for your forgiveness for not drinking wine tonight. In the guest house, the table was set for the Seder. For each place setting, there was a Seder plate and matzah and moror and a cup of cup, an empty cup and bottles of red wine on the table. Soon the royal room was filled with all the people coming to the Seder. They seated themselves around the table. Among them were two strangers dressed in disguise, looking poor like all the other occupants. Hmm, it didn't occur to anyone that that was the king and his prime minister sitting at the Seder. Ah, the rabbi seated himself at the head of the table. But Yantif, he said to everyone, the first item of the Seder was, of course, Kaddish, making Kiddish. The rabbi reminded all the guests of the king's decree. He bade them to rise and lift up the empty wine glass and recite the prayer that he had composed. Master of the world, master of the universe, please accept this cup of wine. Everyone faithfully followed the rabbi's instructions. Otherwise, the Seder went along joyously, as always. The king and the prime minister also were sitting at the Seder. Everyone was happy, except for the prime minister. Oh, no. They listened to the king's order. Oh. No, this is not good for me. <sighs> As they were leaving, the king said to the prime minister, Please, come to my room tomorrow in the afternoon. The next day, the king sent a message to the rabbi, Please come to the palace tomorrow at midday. And so they both came, the prime minister, and the rabbi and met at the gate and were ushered in to the palace, to the king's room. Turning to the rabbi, the king said, unknown to you, worthy rabbi, I and my prime minister came to your seder at the guest house. We were disguised, of course. We came to see with our own very eyes if you would follow my orders. I regret having caused you some pain oh, and interrupting your sacred Seder. Oh, but the prime minister shall pay for his folly. I place him in your hands. Choose any kind of death that you wish for him. Your majesty, the rabbi said, never since we lost our Beit HaMikdash in Yerushalayim, no rabbinic court is authorized to give the death penalty. And in that case, I shall pronounce his death sentence, said the king. Then the king told the rabbi that the de decree prohibiting wine drinking was lifted. And tonight, at the second Seder, everyone could drink as much wine as they liked. All the Jews had a wonderful, joyous time, even happier than usual, celebrating their Seder. Oh, oh. In celebration, not only of the miracles and wonders of the liberation from its rhyme, from Egypt, but also of the miracle that had happened to them. We also may lift our cups or our matzah this year and say to Hashem, Hashem, Master of the universe, it is revealed and known to you why we are in this situation. Why are we are home almost alone or with a small group of people? Why we don't have the usual Seder that we usually do. But Hashem, 
This is your plan. We don't know why. And we are going to make our Seder the best that we possibly could. Chag Sameach.